IDBM Challenge Season 1, Episode 2. You might remember him from his flamboyant clothes, but in today's episode, Katarina discusses with him topics such as courage and compassion and what it means to live a good life. Thank you so much that I can come around to your studio and uh, I'm warmly welcomed here. I, I really, yeah, I'm really happy about it. It's great, great to have you here. <laughs> and um, yeah, we gave you, you also have some insights about the IDBM studies. About the sure, sure, yes. Uh, of course, I've, I've followed it over the years and, and uh, every now and then I would have students that have been there or are in there. And I think it's a great program. I think it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that uh, if you think about Aalto as, as something where people with different backgrounds meet and go about making great things and in, have an impact on the world. So IDBM was Aalto before Aalto. And, and uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I believe in that kind of collaborative, uh, multidisciplinary, uh, multi-method oriented uh, approach, which also uh, uh, is looking for impact rather than just uh, describing things or explaining things, having an actual impact. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. It's a, at least to me, it's encouraging that well, somebody with a, with some such a background is actually saying, "Hey, that's a good thing you're working on, and it's a good approach you're investigating in, into uh, yeah to make the world maybe a pinch better." Out of my own experience, I know when you come to IDVM, there are students from all over the world and um, some of them just arrived the day before the course starts and now they are facing big challenges in these multidisciplinary, multicultural teams and some of them are quite lost um, or everybody is in an ambiguous environment. Um, but do you have like a point of view or an attitude which you think could be enriching for these moments when you come into such situations? Well, I think one word that might be useful is sort of like the word of being uh, freely pulsating. You allow yourself to, to, to pulsate with whatever is taking place and then you try to find the rhythm of the situation, uh, which means that you, to some extent, allow yourself to forget yourself, that you are not so conscious of of yourself, but, but that, that perhaps orient yourself to open yourself to whatever is taking place outside of yourself. And it's, it's uh, because in the, in the kind of society and context uh, of IDBM and, and more broadly Finland, it's, it's pretty secure to throw yourself uh, and, and allow yourself to serve uh, on whatever is taking place. Uh, so, uh, personally, I believe very much uh, in, uh, in psychological safety. So, I believe it's important to facilitate psychological safety uh, in the contexts that we create together. So, that also means, from the point of view of the individual, that, that I think it's, it's important to uh, uh, look at other people as individuals from the point of view of benevolence and from the point of view of good faith and, and, uh, and, and believe that, that uh, we can do something good together. Doing something good together, also maybe doing something good to yourself, because if you are not good to yourself, um, how can you be good to others? <laughs> um, I personally struggled when I came here to position myself in that in that situation. Um, I remember your words in a lecture, they, they supported me very much um, about how to perceive myself. Um, I would love if you share these, like some of your thoughts also to the new students. Okay, can you remember what were my words? Yes. Um, so in this lecture, it was my first lecture at Alto and um, you were saying a person has like I think 40,000 thoughts per day. I don't nail me down on this one now. And um, you can decide what you think 
like and how you think about yourself so do you think very self-critical or not yeah right um, yeah well i'm glad that that has stayed with you the, the idea that we of course do have thousands and thousands of thoughts each day but it could be that those thoughts repeat themselves it could be that they have a pattern about them it could be that they have a tone that doesn't really serve us but we also have the capability as human beings to take as it were the helicopter view regarding our own thoughts and and challenge our own thoughts uh, to be in a slightly different direction as compared to what they might be automatically uh, in terms of the tone in terms of the coloring in terms of kind of nuances that they bring forth and, and more certainly uh, the amount of positivity there is in our thoughts to some extent at least is up to us to decide so you can direct your thoughts for instance be more respectful and more wonder oriented and, and the more uh, curious about uh, whatever is taking place mm -hmm. that might be the case automatically but that means that you direct yourself to what's happening outside of yourself so so getting as they're too much stuck with oneself I think is, is not serving us it's but it might easily happen but if you the people that feel that they are artistic creative if they, they want they have something to say so it can be people want to uh, as they announce themselves very strongly in new contexts I, I believe that's not working the best way uh, to the best of even the individual in contexts such as IDBM I think it's it's very very important to orient yourself to others and listen to others and, and uh, also encourage others to be, more, to be more what they could be at their best. Hmm. For students, uh, for others in, within the team. Now, um, there will sometimes be minutes or situations where people just don't know where to go, like they don't know where to start and where the heck do we start with this project or how can we be creative on this minute? Or there might, might be a conflict um, coming up between also these different patterns of communication. Like when an extrovert German discusses with a more implicit French person that will always uh, go into two different directions at the end. So the, the understanding and communication patterns are very different in the countries. How would you approach such a topic? Uh, I think the main point there is to be curious about the other one, irrespective of how the other one seems to act or seems to react mm -hmm. uh, and assume that there is some good intention behind there that might not come across accurately. So it could be that I'm misled in my interpretation of the other one when my thoughts turn negative because uh, in, a, in a human being uh, thoughts can very easily turn negative. We are very uh, sensitive to things we um, find irritating or things we might find uh, threatening and, and that happens very easily at uh, the subconscious level and then uh, surfaces as something that we believe actually is the case mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we uh, rationalize our own reaction based on the, the surface uh, as opposed to the, the, the depth element within ourselves, the emotion that drove us to that kind of uh, irritated uh, conclusion of the other person or his uh, style. In general, I think it relates to style. So, uh, so it's important, I think, to penetrate to the other person's style, the words, the, the inner beauty that there is. And, and in, 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 in that effort, I think it's useful if you manage to uh, believe yourself that there is that beauty in the person and you sort of try to search for it and try to encourage it to come out. It's almost a humble approach, but also a very explorative approach. That's right, that's very well, uh, well put. Uh, yes, humble and exploratory at the same time. I think that's uh, also it's a sort of uh, opposite to Trump approach. So, so, so uh, believing that the life's a miracle 
primarily is outside of you. That's the point. And, and uh, if that is the case, that the miracle of life primarily is outside of you, uh, it, it's natural to sort of uh, not emphasize your own perspective or your own voice as the primary element of the miracle. Do you have something which you think is important to share with these students coming here and being also from Finland? Like many come from Finland, they and they have rather they might have even the responsibility to integrate the ones who are coming in. They might not. That's their own choice. But um, do you have one or two um, aspects? Well, uh, given the fact that an IDBM student is in Finland, I, th I think the best idea is to make the best of the fact that you are in Finland in that program. It's it's. Uh, if you were in Oxford, if you were in Shanghai, you know, it, it would be different an experience. UCLA in, in Los Angeles is where I went to. But the point is, if you are in Finland, there are things that you actually don't uh, quite that easily uh, would get access to. Because Finland is such a small society, it's, it's, it's fairly compact, but that means that the scale of things I think is human. Uh, and and it's, it's the scale of things that is human in the context of a university that actually is emerging as we speak. It's, it's not a ready-made university. Quite concretely, it's been built just now. So, so it, it's, it's also uh, a reminder of the fact that uh, many of the uh, routines, many of the uh, um, ways of doing things uh, are not fixed as yet. And that means that there's a lot of room for creative action. I think one should uh, make use of that. And, and at the same time, remember the key point, which is uh, uh, a human being as an individual is a miracle, but the miracle is a bigger miracle in the company of other miracles. So, so uh, allowing oneself uh, for that miracle in the context of even bigger miracles to, to emerge. I think that's the best, big, the big point. And in a small country where there, are, there aren't that, that many as the overwhelming temptations. So, so you, you study in California and you see those Ferraris around all the time, you are tradition, you're naturally tempted to making money for instance. It wouldn't be such a big temptation in Finland where you don't see Ferraris. So, so uh, it's it's uh, any context has its uh, pluses and minuses, but I think it's absolutely the case that studying IDBM in other university has tremendous pluses.